Hi, this is Johnny Shannon from Geospatial Insight, and this time we're going to be looking at SAR data, and specifically Sentinel-1 data. Now, Sentinel-1 is a great resource. It's uh, freely available to download, and it's great, especially over um, places like here in the UK, where we have cloud quite a lot of the time, and SAR is the perfect sensor for this because it's not very effective by cloud cover, and you can acquire it day or night. However, there are um, issues, um, different methodologies required for dealing with SAR data because unlike optical data, which measures the chemical properties of the ground surface, SAR measures the physical properties. Let's have a look at some data. Um, this is over the UK. It was acquired back in 2015. And if we uh, load it up into the viewer and have a look, we can see it's covering over the uh, central, southern, western part of uh, England and a little bit of Wales down here. Here we have the Severn Estuary, we've got Bristol here, and it goes all the way down to the Isle of Wight and the English Channel. And so these data cover a very large area. Um, you get a lot of bang for your bucks, and the bucks are zero, which is nice. If we zoom in, though, um, we can start to see some of the issues with the uh, data. It's uh, very speckly. It's uh, entirely consistent with our data. The speckle it is inherently noisy. Um, we can still see some features, though. Um, once you get your eye in, then this is going to be a town, and we can see some field areas around here. We can see the field boundaries because of the different uh, physical properties between the fields. If I flick between uh, the data that I've loaded up here, I've got one from June, one from May, and one from um, April, then we can see that there are changes um, happening in the fields, and these are going to be related to um, what's going on there. So maybe some crops have been planted, um, maybe their crops are growing over the time series we have here, and maybe even some of the crops have been harvested. Um, let's see if we can visualise that um, in a way that's a little bit uh, aesthetically more pleasing. Um, let's fire up the spatial modeler and we'll put all of these data sets into the spatial modeler. Um, because I'm using the SLC data here, um, this is has two bands, it has amplitude and phase, and so we only want to look at the amplitude. And so we'll select uh, just uh, the band one from here. And then we can stack these layers together. Um, need to add a port here because we've got three bands going into it. And then we can preview this data. Let's get rid of this window because we'll be using the preview window now. And we can uh, bring this data in and have a look. Ah. Now, that's a little bit better, isn't it? So now um, we can really see um, visually uh, what's a lot more um, what's going on. <clears throat> so we can see the major urban areas. These are standing out quite clearly now. We can certainly see the field patterns. They're um, looking uh, quite colorful. Um, we have um, some forests here and then down. In this area, this is Salisbury Plain, which is standing out very, very clearly indeed as well. So visually, it's uh, firstly a lot more pleasing, um, but secondly, we can really see a lot more information once we put these bands together. Now, the question is, how can we extract that information from these data? Well, um, if we had, um, for instance, some field boundaries, um, then we could uh, use those to maybe gather some statistics over the area of those fields. Ah, <laughs> and as if by magic, we land up in exactly the right area. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that uh, a lot of these fields are fairly consistent in the type of physical response we're getting back at, uh, at the sensor here. And so maybe those correlate directly to what's, uh, what's being grown in those fields. So what we want to do is to um, gather statistics from each of those field uh, boundaries. So let's do that. We need to add in uh, that uh, field boundary file here. Um, I'm going to convert it to raster because then I'm going to use another operator um, to uh, restrict the processing area to just um, over that field. So that will speed things up for us. Um, let's put that over there. And then we define our processing area. So we have one raster in there. This is the field boundary area. And then if I double click here, 
Then we have the intersection of the inputs, that's absolutely fine. Cell size, I want to have the same as the SAR, that's the rest of one in, that's great. And let's uh, just have a quick preview of that to make sure that uh, we're running in the right area. Fit to frame, great, that's just over the, uh, uh, the field area of interest. Okay, so what can we do? We want to gather statistics from those field boundary areas. Um, I haven't got time in this video to go over exactly how we're going to do that. And so what I'm gonna do is just copy um, some operators from another model and paste them in here. Um, I'll talk briefly what we're doing. We're taking some raster information. We're finding out how many bands there are. Um, and then we are gathering statistics um, from each of those areas. Um, we're putting them into bands. So we have three bands of statistics with three different dates. And then we will output them as a raster file. And let's add a port into the preview so we can see what's going on there. Um, I'll come back to this in a later video and talk a little bit more through uh, what exactly is going on in these operators um, next time around um, and also add on uh, some other um, features within this model that will make it uh, easier to run. But for now, let's have a look at the preview. Okay, here it is. Um, we've got our preview of our um, mean values of uh, each of those uh, field parcels. And if we have a comparison between the two, we can see that the colors there are matching up pretty well to the colors from the original SAR data. So where do we go from here? We want to convert that um, uh, those uh, statistics gathered for each of the, those fields into something useful. Well, stay tuned. And in the next video, um, I will let you know and show you how we can actually do that. Um, for now, I hope that's been useful. Um, I hope you're looking forward to the next video uh, where we uh, delve into this a little bit more deeply. But for now, that's all from me.